Morning, I'm KC. This is Keystone Curiosity, where we talk about all things unique to the state of Pennsylvania. Today's episode is going to be about Cook Forest State Park. Welcome to Keystone Curiosity, where we explore the life, land, and culture of my beloved home state. Pennsylvania has something to offer everyone, and is living proof that the world is a beautiful place. You just need to take the time to find it. Located just south of Allegheny National Forest along the Clarion River resides a rare glimpse of a world long past. Initially being inhabited by the Seneca Nation of the Iroquois Confederacy, Cook Forest State Park is one of the few remaining preserves of old growth forests on the east side of the Mississippi River. The area would be initially settled by Europeans in 1826 by a man named John Cook who had come to the area to assess the possibility of building a canal along the Clarion River. He would purchase 765 acres and build a cabin and a sawmill at the mouth of Tom's Run, near where the park office stands to this day. Cook would work the mills, logging the forest, and rafting logs down the Clarion to the Allegheny and onward to Pittsburgh. He would teach the trade to one of his sons, Andrew, who would later inherit the land upon his father's death in 1858. Anthony Cook would expand upon the business, building an additional three sawmills, a planing mill, and the original Cook Forest Inn. He would establish the Cook Homestead at the intersection of Route 36 and River Road, near where his father's original cabin stood. His passing in 1891 would see the management of the business pass to the A. Cook Sons Company, but it would be his eldest son who would later become a champion for the trees. Anthony Wayne had found the peace of the forest to be an experience unequaled, a mentality that he was not alone in. In August of 1910, a man by the name of Israel McCrite and a few others had been invited to the Cook Homestead for a house party. McCrite was a prominent citizen of Du Bois in nearby Clearfield County. He had developed an admiration for the Native American way of life and hosted many well-known figures from the Wild West, including Chiefs Sitting Bull, Red Cloud, and Buffalo Bill Cody. This admiration was learned from his own involvement in the Buffalo Bone Trade, which saw the near extinction of the American bison, the lessons from which he would use in the ancient forests of Pennsylvania. Anthony Wayne would walk his guests through the Forest Cathedral, one of 11 old growth groves that would later become part of Cook Forest State Park. McCrite would write about his experience later in the retelling of the creation of this park. Cook would comment as he led the way into the silent temple of the gods, and then listen to the exclamations of astonishment that were sure to come from those who followed along the fern-bound path in this very land. Often, there was heard no comment, for in this silent cathedral of the Almighty, it was unuttered. During this walk, McCrite sat upon a log with Cook to address the future of the beauty all around them, stating, No greater crime could be committed than to destroy this. It shall not be destroyed. It must be saved for humanity's sake. But as it is with the landscape before them, words are not enough. McCrite and others would form the Pennsylvania Conservation Association and begin the battle to save the last stand of historic Penn's Woods. After 16 years of lobbying and raising money, Governor John Stutchell Fisher signed a bill in April of 1927 appropriating $450,000 to the purpose, and the Secretary of the Department of Forests and Waters announced the formal purchase of more than 6,000 acres, making Cook Forest the first Pennsylvania State Park acquired for the preservation of a natural landmark. The park has since become an excellent place to appreciate the natural beauty of Pennsylvania sporting campgrounds, cabins, and numerous activities for family fun. The park and the forest itself would only gain in fame in 1968 when the old growth of the Forest Cathedral was designated as a national natural landmark. But what exactly is an old growth forest? How does it differ from a regular forest like this one? As the name suggests, age plays a key role in the distinction. Old growth forests are the original forest ecosystems of North America. It was these ecosystems that the Native Americans called home, and what the first European settlers would have found upon their arrival to the New World. These dense forests became the building materials of the fledgling America, and as the United States expanded, so did their need for lumber. Which, if you've seen any of my videos about the state parks in northern Pennsylvania, you may already know that this led to over-harvesting and clear-cutting, leaving nothing but devastation in its wake. But the old growth stands that remain were spared from this fate. Since the trees here have never been harvested, many of them are over 200 years old, with some being well over 300. 
After the original forests were cut, things would still grow back or oftentimes be replanted. These new forests would initially be comprised mostly of pine trees, which would grow straight up rapidly due to the lack of competition. Now this all sounds well and fine until you take into account that the lack of diversity makes the entire forest ecosystem susceptible to diseases and parasites that might otherwise only affect a small percentage. Additionally, the ease of growth makes the wood in these trees less dense and doesn't allow for as much time for the roots to grow out and entangle with the existing root systems. This in turn makes them less stable to high winds and worse yet, less resistant to forest fires. While the advice of Smokey the Bear absolutely rings true with over 85% of forest fires being caused by human sources, the extent of their spread and the destruction that it has caused is heavily influenced by the composition of the forest itself. With over one-third of North America covered in forests, the trees still dominate much of the land. But of those trees, only around 36% are of a mature age, meaning that the majority are these newer and more susceptible forests which is at least a part of the reason why these wildfires have been so devastating over the past few years. This is a pattern that is unlikely to change, as the harvesting of the older forests is more profitable than the second growth tree farms. But places like Cook Forest provide some hope for the future. Resting at just over an hour and a half from either State College or Pittsburgh, Cook Forest State Park is one of the less than 4% of old growth forests remaining in North America. Perhaps by gaining an appreciation for these forests in their strong and natural state, we can keep from repeating the mistakes of the past, an appreciation that is best learned firsthand through the all of a personal experience. That's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. As per the usual, if you have any suggestions on where you'd like to see me go next, leave them in the comments below. In the meantime, hit that like and subscribe so that you can receive notifications about anywhere else near Cook Forest State Park or all across the state of Pennsylvania itself. But in the meantime, y'all have a good one.